I'm going to be changing out my ESCs and my motors today. I'm going to be changing out these little B20 ESCs, which, although they've served me well, are, are hardly state-of-the-art anymore. And I'm going to be taking off these RCX motors, which, as you know, if you follow my channel regularly, are beat up and vibration full as heck, even after I changed the bearings. Which, by the way, changing the bearings made a huge difference, but still they are pretty bad. And I thought to myself, I have got these sitting right here on my desk. Rather than save them for like a new build, let's just put them on this old girl and really, I mean, I got a lot of top-notch stuff on here. Why not have some top-notch motors? So I'm going to change these motors out and also I'm going to put the ESCs, the new ESCs on, are going to be the RG20 Plus ESCs, which have disappeared completely from my bench. Where are they? Where the bugger did they go? I know they're here. I know they're like right here. Oh, there they are. Yeah, thank you. Thank goodness. RG20 ESCs, RG20 Plus, this is the F390 version. So I'm gonna be putting them on. And here's the deal. I, I didn't wanna just take this whole thing apart and have to like get in here and desolder all these wires and take this whole stack apart. What a hassle that's gonna be. So I thought, I have a very clever idea and actually I've tested it on one of these arms and it did work. I'm just gonna desolder the ESC from the power and signal wires and just replace it from the outside. And at first glance, this seems like, like, oh, you're desoldering from the ESC. Isn't that, I don't know, can you do that? And, and uh, yeah, I guess you can. I mean, why not, right? I guess it's, the ESC has the little, it's small and fiddly and expensive, and a PDB is just like, oh, big and burly, and of course you can solder to a PDB. But don't be afraid of soldering. I mean, if you're a, a new, and you're just going to, damage your ESC and destroy it, then, I mean, then, you know, know your limitations, I guess. But, you can solder things. Now, I know that in the Mixuko build, I, um, had a little trouble soldering, and people were like, dude, you should get a decent soldering iron. And so I've made sure that my iron tip is adequately hot, and you'll see, I have no problem soldering. There's nothing wrong with this iron, I just didn't quite have it hot enough for the Mixuko build, and I was using the wrong tip. So, so no, no worries. I always say that the key to successful soldering is good prep. You gotta have, you gotta have a clean tip, and you know, all, all has to be right. Clean work surfaces, etc. by which I mean the, the metal, not the, uh, not the, not your desk. But I will say this, if you're trying to solder and it's not going right, go back to basics. Make sure you have a clean tip, make sure that you have flux or rosin core solder applied to the joint, make sure you've tinned the surfaces in question, make sure that um, the, the metal is clean, if it's oxidized, use flux to clean it or use uh, sandpaper or something to clean it. Do all the groundwork and then things will go right. Usually when you're trying to solder and it's not going right, it's because you haven't laid the correct groundwork. Anyway, there you go. And now that motor is off. And then it's just a matter of soldering the other stuff back on. So let's go ahead and do that real quick to one of these. So here is the ESC. And we're going to make note. We've got ground here and power there and signal and ground. Okay. So I am going to go ahead and desolder the whole thing. In, a, in another situation, what I might do is solder one wire at a time. So desolder ground, solder the new ground on, desolder positive, solder the new positive on. And that would ever prevent you from, you know, from messing it up, from ever getting it wrong. Now I've seen some people and they'll solder the motor wires like this. I'm not really sure why they do it that way. I guess it's to get the... I don't know why they do it that way, actually. Well, 
I've done it now. A little fresh solder on there. It looks like this red lead, this positive lead, is going to be the limitation on how close to the motor I can put it. So let's use that as our spacing guide. And we'll do it just like that. And then we're going to use these tweezers. These are, um, I don't know what the name for this kind of tweezers is, but you can see that it's spring-loaded so it holds itself. I like to use this for this because the, the forceps, which are a fantastic tool, but the problem is the forceps only have one speed, and that's tight. So they will crush the wire and, and dam damage the insulation. Whereas for this kind of job, these little spring-loaded tweezers are just perfect. Bingo. Doesn't get better than that. There's no way I'm going to be able to film this successfully because i got to stick my face right down there in there to see what I'm doing. So I apologize for that. Okay. Okay. And now that that's done, We'll just install the motor just like we normally do. Bingo. Hope that was helpful. Happy flying.